Hello friends and welcome back to the channel where we delve into the mind of a villain. In today's entry, we'll be taking a closer look at Hopper, the antagonist of the Disney Pixar film, A Bug's Life. A stern and dominating leader, Hopper is a class act in the art of forcefully commanding the respect and compliance of those under him, whether it's his victims, the ants, or his own grasshopper subordinates. Right from his first dramatic landing into the ants' tunnel, the film establishes commanding presence by having the camera pan up to follow the ants' point of view to look up at him. Hopper then looks down at the ants groveling at his feet with a hint of scorn, symbolic of how he looks down on the ants as a lower class of species, before unceremoniously walking over them. In his own words later in the film, he calls them mindless, soul-shoving losers put on the earth to serve him. Much of his power over the ants comes from his physical advantage over them. Hopper is easily twice the size of a regular ant, significantly stronger with faster reflexes, and could easily squish them to death with one foot. When he first invades the ants' tunnel to inquire about the missing food offering, Hopper takes his time slowly walking around without saying a word to assert his dominance as the surrounding ants part like the Red Sea wherever he walks. Not unlike a drill sergeant who first walks around to size up his recruits and to set up the atmosphere according to his terms. It is likely that Hopper was first testing the ants by walking around to see if their subservient attitude towards him had changed, given that for the first time they did not have their food offering prepared. When he realizes that he still has their fear and respect, the seemingly calm and collected Hopper then raises his voice to demand for his offering. Right from the start, we see that Hopper's method of compliance is that of fear and intimidation. He is no different from the typical gangster demanding extortion money in exchange for sparing the person's livelihood. He is quick to remind the ants of what would happen should his demands not be met implying the unfortunate fate that would befall them by releasing his most unhinged henchmen for display. So effective is Hopper's ability to intimidate the ants that it manages to shroud the advantage they have in sheer numbers. Deep down, Hopper knows that the ants could overthrow him, especially with them outnumbering the grasshoppers a hundred to one. He actually fears them, but he hides it with his oppressive and cruel behavior and exploits their submissive nature. Hopper does not believe in cooperation or a mutually beneficial relationship with the ants. He is a bitter and damaged individual who has likely gone through much hardship exemplified by his view of the world, where in his own words, he describes it as bug eat bug world out there. It is this mentality that causes Hopper to always appear strong while abusing those he deems below him. A good leader has to encourage positive behavior and provide deterrence for negative behavior. While there are no examples of the former for Hopper in the film, there are several for the latter. Hopper keeps a tight lid on the ants, immediately addressing any challenge to his authority and resolving any defiance. Things look to be under his control until he encounters Flick, an ant who has a surprising amount of confidence to stand up to him, the one in 10,000. Flick represents a hint of what could cause Hopper's downfall, the possibility of the entire colony standing up to him, which would free them from his rule. Naturally, Hopper doesn't take kindly to any challenge to his authority, and after Flick is back in line, he proceeds to punish the rest of the ants to discourage anyone else from standing up to him. And it's a harsh punishment, doubling the food order, even though the ants were already short on time for their own food collection. It's interesting to note that Hopper only demanded double the usual extortion after Flick stood up to him to remind the ants of their place. Hopper knows that to ensure the ants' continued compliance, he has to discourage any behavior that is contrary to his purposes. Any insubordination must be immediately addressed or it would lead to more insubordination. We see this later in the film, too, when the ants failed a second time to gather his offering. Now he escalates the punishment to execution of the queen, 
after removing every scrap of food off the island. Hopper's authoritarian style extends to the management of his own subordinates as well. Although they do not agree with his plans to return to Ant Island, none of them feel comfortable voicing this out to him, instead choosing to communicate through his brother, Molt. When Hopper learns of their disagreement, again he is quick to stomp out any insubordination, correcting their complacency and reminding them of the harsh punishment should they not comply with his request. His gang follows him not only out of respect, but out of fear and trembling. It's also noteworthy to mention that Hopper places a great deal on leadership, emphasizing that a leader should bear the responsibility of the mistakes of those under their care. When Princess Ada tries to deflect the blame of the offering to Flick, Hopper doesn't care to hear the details, but instead tells her that as a leader, Everything is her fault, whether good or bad. Perhaps it is this mentality on leadership that causes Hopper to be as imposing as he is on those under him and forcefully ensure their compliance. His only redeeming attribute is that he respected his mother enough to honor her deathbed request to never kill his brother Molt. However, he does make it explicitly clear that he would have surely killed him if not for the promise. Unfortunately for Hopper, his biggest mistake in the course of the film was not dealing with Flick from the start and making a public example of him to show the colony what happens when someone stands up to him. He eventually did make a public example of Flick at the end of the film after learning of his attempt to scare the grasshoppers off with a constructed bird, but by then it was too late. Flick's bold attitude had already spread amongst the colony and a rebellion was started, one that the grasshoppers could not withstand. Ruthless, violent, and manipulative, Hopper was a cruel supremacist, ironically looking down on the ants as a lower form of species, while he was hypocritically depending on them for his own survival, using brute force to keep them subservient to his purposes at their own expense. So what do you think of Hopper, folks? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, subscribe to see more entries like these, and you can check out some of the other characters covered here.